Conference and the first year of the Domain Economic Forum. I'd like to give a very warm Texas welcome to any of our first-time attendees, as well as guests from outside of North America. Thank you so much for coming to NamesCon. This is the keynote hall, and this is the first keynote presentation of NamesCon. I'm Bill Sweetman, president of Name Ninja, and it's my great honor, it will be my great honor in a moment, to introduce your keynote speaker. Before I do that, however, if I could kindly ask you to make sure your smartphones, tablets, and holograms are in silent or vibrate mode, thank you very much. And if you're here for the auction this afternoon, which is at four, starts at 4.15, you can get your auction paddles directly outside the doors here, in the little area that's just outside. Make sure you get your paddles before the 415 auction. Now, let me tell you a little bit about our keynote speaker. Aman Bhutani is the CEO of GoDaddy, the world's leading domain name registrar. Since taking the helm of GoDaddy in September of 2019, Bhutani has reaffirmed his commitment to transparency, as well as GoDaddy's commitment to helping individuals and entrepreneurs realize their visions by getting the right domain and the right website. Over 20 years of technical, entrepreneurial, managerial, and leadership experience has led him to this stage in his career and this stage here. And he has many valuable insights to share about the future of GoDaddy and how domain investors play an important role. So please join me in welcoming GoDaddy CEO, Aman Bhutani, to the stage. But I'll start by saying thank you for supporting me in Thank you for coming to Austin. And thank you for the warm welcome from me. I got to meet a few of you over the last day or so. And everybody has been so nice um, to me and that, that I really, really appreciate it. You know, my goal today is to take a few minutes out of my time to tell you a little bit about how I've entered the company and how, what, what I see for the company. Because I hear that some of you are quite curious about what I plan to do uh, with GoDaddy. But I'd also like to take a majority of the time to listen to you. So that's how this hour is structured. It's structured with a little bit of time for me up front, and then a lot of time for me to, to listen to you and for us to listen to you. So this presentation is called Sushi Onions and Domain Investors. And maybe those three things don't go well uh, together often, but I'll hope to pull them together over the next uh, 10, 15 minutes or so. You know, I've, I've been at GoDaddy for almost about five months now. Let's make sure that the technology works. There we go. Um, for about five months now. And it's been a busy time. I'm learning a lot. There's a lot to learn in the domain business. There's a lot to learn in the other businesses that we're in. And we've, we've been changing some things. You know, one of the things we've changed is our logo. You recently, hopefully, you saw that come out. And the way we feel about it is that a logo is just as good as what we put into it. Every interaction we have with you, our customers, is what you see in our brand. And when I looked at this, this mark for the first time, what I liked about it is that it brought out just clear the love that we want to demonstrate for our customers. And I use that word, those two words very, very purposefully, the word love and the word customer. Because for many people in this room, and for people at GoDaddy as well, perhaps we saw this community, the domain investor community, as a source of supply as suppliers of domain names that we use for customers on GoDaddy.com. Well, today, one of the big differences I'm going to talk to you about is that we are lined up to treat you as customers. That doesn't mean we're not going to treat you as suppliers and continue the good work we've done there, but we're going to treat you as customers, and I'm going to try and explain what that means. And our goal is to fill up this new market with all the good things that we can do that make sure that you feel that we're living up to the expectation that we're putting in this new market here. We call it the GO because we feel we got a lot to do and our customers got, have a lot to do and we all got to go and just make it happen. In fact, one of the fun phrases we use in the Austin office here is let's go and it's something I, I enjoy quite a lot too. So let's start at the top of this company. Right? Our mission simply is to empower entrepreneurs everywhere. And it's very, very important that we draw the bridge between this group here and the word everyday entrepreneur. For us, everyday entrepreneur is somebody who has a small or a micro business. 
somebody who's taken things into their own hands is making their own way. In fact, sometimes when we use the word everyday entrepreneur, people think we're talking about the big entrepreneurs, you know, people think we're talking about Bill Gates, Steve Jobs, and sometimes people think we're talking about the entrepreneur that has a small independent business, a coffee shop, something like that. Well, actually what we mean is anyone that has a small business that's making their own way. Our mission is to support them with purpose, with technology, and human resources, and humanity, what we say is humanity, to bring things together to serve their needs. And you know, when we looked at this community here, and you can see we, we have a picture of we have pictures of a few of you, and actually this presentation only came together about five minutes ago because last night we decided to change a few things. And the thing we decided to change was to put in pictures of people, some of the people that I met yesterday, that I talked to yesterday, because already I'm learning a set of things from them. And I'll tell you a little bit about it. The first person I met, well, he wasn't the first in line, but you know, one of the people I met yesterday was Peter. And uh, for those of you that know Peter, definitely know he's very tall. Uh, and, and this monitor is making some noise, but it's all right. <laughs> but Peter's definitely very tall, but he's, he's done something interesting for me. What he did for me is explain to me that this group has different kinds of people in the group. That domain investor is not one thing, it's many things. And before I talk about too much more, let me have Peter sort of talk about it in his own words. I have been a domain investor, sort of the real estate of the internet, since 2006. I've tried to buy and sell, I've bought and part, but ultimately I found that I really enjoyed the development aspect of it. Creating niche products and services on these domain names to find many points in the industry. And Vidaliomanews.com was one that hit the nail on the head. You can be in the day we're all trying to match domains with partners that can leverage what we see as really strong inferior managers, which allow even smaller and mid-sized businesses to compete with larger companies solely based on the fact that you own the full asset. Peter, you're getting a few orders from the Rally people this year for sure. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, like Peter listed out really well. He said, you know, there are people that want to monetize by so buying and selling domains. There are people that want to monetize their buying domains and parking, and probably people that do both. But there are also people in this community that buy domains because they want to develop them, they want to build businesses. And I'm sure it's more than those three things. I'm sure there's much more to this group of people. And as in the next couple of minutes, I'll, I'll tell you why that's so important for us as GoDaddy. Let me tell you about a couple of others, uh, other customers that we met yesterday. There we go. Uh, the second, one of the other people I met was Shane, and I don't know if we have Shane in the room, or what, there he is, Shane. And something is said to me, obviously this went up right after I talked to you, <laughs> you know, and I said, we will have Shane in the presentation tomorrow. And Shane said something really interesting. Uh, for those of you that know, don't know Shane, for about 100 plus years, maybe about 150, his family's had a nursery. And Shane's actually a, celeb a local celebrity. Uh, with the 80 year old and over women. Is that right, Shane? Right? <laughs> it's, it's 80 plus women. Um, that, and he's a celebrity, but he has a TV show locally, so people on the street stop him and they talk to him about the show. Uh, but when he comes to Namescon, he's Shane, the guy who buys domains, right? He's the domain investor, Shane. He gets to be a completely different person. In fact, he's such a different person, he told me that he brought his mom to name Scone once just to prove to her that he had this completely different identity. And I thought that was a great story because a lot of the people that I got to meet over the last few days in this community actually have almost dual identities. You know, they have this domain business and then they have other things that they do. We, we have one customer partner we met yesterday who has five businesses. And I was like, okay, well, tell me about all those businesses. This is, this is really a fascinating group of entrepreneurs. And there are some of us that are thinking even longer term. Alvin, I don't know if Alvin, you are in the room, right, right up front. Alvin told me something yesterday, and of course I had to change the presentation for you in it too, Alvin. <laughs> Alvin said, Iman, I've got an idea for you. Domains are such an important asset, and by asset, I truly mean asset, that I'm going to leave some of the domain names for my kids and my grandkids. I'm like, that's a great idea because it really tells you the value of this asset and how you believe in it. In fact, he said to me, I want even if somebody offered me hundreds of thousands of dollars for some of these names, I am not going to sell them because they are part of my inheritance. Because that's what's important to help him. And again, it shows me just like how differently people think about 
being in this industry. And why is that important? Right? Well, you know, you may see me as the CEO of GoDaddy, but 20 years ago I was an entrepreneur, like many of you, I started a company. Um, and I still fancy myself as a little bit of an entrepreneur. And you know, I feel that people that lead businesses, they build these formulas. These, these formulas are formulas to winning. These are the things that they've tried, they've done, and it allows them to be successful. Well, I thought one thing you might appreciate if I shared one of my formulas for winning. And this is something I've done for over 20 years now, and it's continued to win for me again and again and again. And the formula is very, very simple. You start with the idea of transparency. And we all know what transparency means. It's just an idea that you just look to make things simple and clear so that you can see through things. To do that with this community, it means you know, getting out there and knowing all of you, right? You take that and use it to raise your awareness because that's something that's really hard to do. It's hard to take something that somebody else knows well and for you, for me to understand it or somebody else to understand it. And the way to raise that awareness because it's so hard is by making things really transparent so that the awareness is helped. And then when you act on that awareness, you want to do it in a disciplined manner. You want to do it in a manner that's measurable. You want to do it in a manner that's defensible. You want to do it in a manner that you can stand in front of 5,000 people and say, yes, we did that. And whether we succeeded or failed at that moment actually doesn't matter because failure is just a way of learning something new. But if we do it again and again, we can make things more transparent. We can raise the awareness of our people. And we can be more and more disciplined about, about how we do it. So I want to show you a couple quick images and, and a quick video of how strongly I feel about this. You know, of course, this is a picture uh, that we read. Uh, here we go. <laughs> maybe you can, there we go. I think maybe I'll just do this and you click for me. <laughs> maybe the technology is a bit hard for me here. Um, this is a picture of, uh, from the video we just showed you. You know, transparency for me is a bit like this. We all see a version of the world that's hazy, and one way to say it is that it's kind of average. Right? If we talk about people in this room here, we can call all of your domain investors, but actually the true thing is if we were looking through a lens, each individual is different, and their needs are a bit different, and we need to work hard to make that clear. And that's what transparency is about. That's why it's super important to engage with as many subgroups, as many people as possible to truly understand what they're trying to do. You know, awareness is really about awareness, awareness, yes, awareness is really about making sure uh, that you, you're processing and thinking about what you've learned. Because you can do all the work to make things transparent, but if you don't let that change you, that's not going to do anything, right? And for me, the, as I led larger and larger teams, it became very, very important that I did that well, that I allowed the data coming to me to change me and change how I felt. That's why it was very important for me to engage many of you. That's why I told you some of the stories about the people that I met. And then discipline is something that I've been working on for 20 years, and I try to be better at it. But uh, there is somebody that I think says it very, very well. This is a sushi chef. His name is Jiro. Um, and if you've seen the film, people have seen the film Jiro and the Sushi. Yeah? Hopefully you like that film. So if we can just go to the next slide. And, uh, you know, have, I'll have Jiro talk about it before I talk about it. Thank you. Either it's one of three choices. Either it's better than yesterday, 
or is meh, kind of the same as yesterday, or worse than yesterday. And all he's looking for is to make it better than yesterday. If he's able to do that a third of the time, every day, within a few years, he becomes just an amazing chef. And in a few decades, he's just the best in the world. That's the idea of discipline that I try to take. That's the, that's the idea that I want leaders at GoDaddy to implement. When I think about, and if we can go to the next slide, um, please, and we can skip that. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, one back. You know, for me, one of the important goals at GoDaddy is to line up the teams so that they're delivering on this formula. For a very long time, this community has, has been on the supplier side for GoDaddy. For a very long time, we have had Paul Nix and the team work hard to serve your needs. And many of you have said to me over the last day, what a fantastic job they do. You know, I am very grateful to have Paul, I'm very grateful to have Bob Mountain, and all of the teams that do a fantastic job at GoDaddy. And what we want to do is that we want to line up a set of other teams behind that group to go deeper in terms of serving your needs. To use the success formula to say, let's make it more transparent, let's get deeper to understand what what is needed. And the fact is, many of you have told us already, or you have told Paul and Bob and others, but we are creating the way where that is transparent to our entire organization. And when we do that, we, we raise the awareness across GoDaddy about this customer base. We, we make it clear to every person in GoDaddy that this, these are our customers, not just our suppliers. And we need to do the work that grows their businesses, that helps them do the things they need better and better. And we intend to be super disciplined about it. Discipline about it means that we're going to test. We're going to add more experimentation in the work we do with you. We're going to launch more things. We're going to try more things. And if they work, we're going to stay with them. So what are a couple of examples uh, of such things? Oops, I'm going to stop clicking. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> the, the first is, you know, we've done a little bit of work on the mobile app. Because we know that if you're Peter, you're probably on the onion field. And if you're uh, if you want to be with your grandkids. You know, so you can use the mobile device to, do, to stay up to date, to do most of your work. We've done a little bit here. We're going to commit here to do a lot more. And we're going to treat it like any other customer interface that we have at the company to really push the boundary and give you the best tools and capabilities. If we go to the next slide, you know, while we do that, we're also going to enhance the other side of the market, this marketplace where people are, other customers have access to the, to the assets you have. Right? And we're going to iterate and test on that to make this more and more clear to our, to our everyday customer that comes in and just wants to buy a domain, make it clear to them that we have all of you and you have amazing assets that can be more available. Now, we have done work on this already, but we have ideas that we think can press this even further. And if we bring those ideas together, let me give you one example of a piece of feedback that actually came from someone in this room. You know, Somebody said, hey, you guys use the academic brand, and it's great, and we love working with you. But we think the park pages may do better if you use the GoDaddy brand, because it's just more recognizable. Right? And in the past, we've tried to keep those brands quite separate, because there, there wasn't necessarily any need to merge them. But what we're committing to is saying, OK, well, if, if our customer, this is not a, you know, this is a customer group that we know quite well, you can literally walk up to us and tell us. If we have a set of customers telling us that it might work better, then we're going to go test it. And it may not look exactly like this, but it looks something like this, where we put the GoDaddy brand out there, and then we're actually going to measure whether it performs better or not. And when we talk to you, the way we're going to talk to you about it is to say, we like that idea. We're going to treat it like a hypothesis. With that hypothesis, we're going to test it, and we'll tell you what the result is. And we're going to do our best, we could go to the next slide, to give you more and more of that data back that when we experiment, we'll tell you. But this is data that we wanted to share with you that's just about our broader search. We think that this community would find valuable just the, sim the, the simple idea that these are the search terms that are getting the most searches on our site. Right? We think it should help you. When we experiment, we'll try to tell you more about those experiments as well. We'll tell you which one worked, which one failed. Now, you know, if you're tracking with us, you'll probably know anyway, because the ones that win will go out and the ones that don't come back, right? But a simple thought, thought like, wow, car searches are really up. We think it's interesting for you to know, right? I myself was shocked to see this. 
that are not only up that far, that actually from an index perspective, it's almost three times the searches of the word tech. These are people coming in looking for domains. These are the terms that they're putting in. Right? So we're going to set this up in a manner where, if, if you can see, we line this up in a relationship between GoDaddy and its customers and suppliers. You're actually on both sides of the marketplace for us. And we're very, very grateful and thankful to have that. If I elaborate up for a minute for the big things that we are trying to do as GoDaddy, not just for this customer group, but for all of them, then if you listen to me talk about talk on our earnings calls, you'll hear me say three things. You'll hear me talk about us creating an intuitive, seamless experience for our customers. And I touched on that a bit in terms of building experiences for this customer group that is intuitive, gives you the tools and capabilities that you demand from us and we should provide. And we have provided some and we have enough to provide. The second thing I talk about is having a platform and that platform being able to support lots of different types of customer bases and lots of different kinds of e-commerce capabilities. And we have an amazing aftermarket platform that all of you use. And we're going to have that platform work better for you by sharing a bit more data with you that allows we think helps you with your business. And the third thing I'll talk about is the idea of activating our community. Now, activating our community is a really, really big thing when we think about dentists that work with us or plumbers that work with us. For this community, it is already activated. We have a conference called Namecon, Namescon that all of you come together on, right? So with this community, I would say it's not about, as much about activating the community. It, what it's really about is making sure that we're winning with that formula where we're working hard to learn more from you, that you feel that you can give us feedback, that you feel that our awareness rises with that, with that feedback because we feel differently, not just in parts of our organization, but all of it that you feel that we're taking a disciplined approach to acting on that feedback. And the word discipline does mean that when we experiment, sometimes your idea will work and sometimes it won't. In fact, large scale experimentation clearly shows that about a third of the ideas win, a third of the ideas lose, and a third of the ideas are just kind of neutral. They don't go anywhere. Right? So keep that in mind, but we're going to try and increase that rate of experimentation and sort of take more ideas, take them as hypotheses. And ultimately, you know, what, what we want to end with is the simple statement, if you could go to the next slide. You know, we're trying to live up to this expectation as a company. That we are about what you're about. And when we say you, we mean our customers. Right? And that you should see that reflected from our actions. That's about all I really wanted to talk about today. What I'd love to do is ask Paul Nix to come up, because I just want to recognize him for the great work he and his team have done over the years on behalf, on behalf of all of you. And we want to give back the rest of this time to actually all of you. We have a microphone in the middle. We'd love to hear your comments. We'd love to hear your questions. We'd love to hear any thoughts you have. You know, even if it's not something that needs an answer, we'd love to just hear from you because it sort of sets the tone of us pushing the bar and transparency and hopefully in time, showing awareness and then showing, showing discipline action on it. So thank you very much again for having me, and we'd love to take some comments from you. Apply that into their thinking, 
right? And being a better person doesn't mean that you're not super competitive, that you are not super aggressive or type A. That, it's not that. Being a better person is about understanding what your team needs, what the gaps are, being in the detail, right? And pressing that really forward. That's something that I try to apply every day. And the second thing I would say is this idea of coming in every day and being better, right? I, I would tell you in the past, sometimes there was a view for entrepreneurs or companies that said, look, we're just never wrong. We just get it right all the time, right? And that's just not true. Companies win not because people are right all the time, but because those that fail, they wake up the next morning and try again. Right? What matters is the number of shots you take on goal because your success rate is actually not too different from other people. So you've got to try again and again and again. The same thing is actually true for sports. You know, I tell my own team about this. Um, this is stats you can pull, very easy to get. You know, if you look at, let's say, the top seeded tennis player versus the 20th seed in a tournament, every point in tennis matters, right? But winning games matters more. Right? If you look at their success rate on a point basis, the person that's seeded 20th, if they're playing the top player in the world, they'll get about a third of the points. They'll win about 35% of the points. The top player will actually win 41% of the points. So they're not winning that many more points. But what they do is that on the moments it matters, they bring their team. Their team. Right? So that piece, that's the second piece that's really important, making sure that you're taking as many shots in the as possible, and when it matters, you really bring everything, that you're not holding back anything. To me, those are two really important things. Thank you, Omar. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Omar. I thought this was absolutely wonderful. Paul, uh, as well as uh, Sora and the whole team. My, my question uh, is kind of look, looking backwards at GoDaddy over the last five to 10 years. Scott worked really hard to bring profitability into the equation of, of how the company obviously operates. Did very well in the last couple of years. I wanted to get your take, like what is the next five years uh, of, you know, profit growth look like from GoDaddy and where do you see that coming from from the products that like we all use, we have partners and products that, that use, you know, GoDaddy, where, where do you see that part of the, the growth of GoDaddy coming from? Yeah, as a CEO of a public company, I have to be a bit careful that I don't, I don't end up giving long-term guidance, <laughs> having a you know, but, but I would say we've had good, strong growth and we've given guidance in the past that we're, we're going to continue to grow on the top line, be a growth company, right? And also deliver bottom line growth. So, you know, in terms of trajectory, we both can maintain it and, and just continue to be this financially the successful company that we are. I would say this, the slight change for us is that we really now want to be a customer led company, right? Because if the first few years of the company were, uh, or I would say last few years, not first few years as a public company, we're making sure that we were growing, that we were doing the right thing for investors, that, you know, the investment community trusted us, understood our business. Well, the next five years are very much about us lining our teams up very clearly against customers and delivering for them, because that creates long-term competitive advantage for the company. In terms of the products, I would say a lot of our products have lots of opportunity, right? You know, this group here is very successful, I hope, working with GoDaddy, and it's a, you know, Paul's business is a very successful business for GoDaddy. But the opportunity that we have across the board is that domain investors are one type of everyday entrepreneurs. We also work with partners who are like designers, developers, IT admins, agencies, things like that. We also work with people who just have an idea they want to take online. They come into our, our marketplace, often they buy, sometimes they buy a domain from you directly, sometimes they buy from our registry partner, and we can do more and more to help them, whether it's with their web experience, whether it's with their marketing tools, um, whether it's you know just in terms of their general support. And you know, in terms of new products, I would say the one or two products that I'm most excited about that I feel are adjacent is that on that end, our customers reaching out to their customers. Like our customers are so small, most of our customers are one person. You know, I'm, I'm sure some, some people in the room are the same way. It's a one person shop, right? So when they look at their tool set and they want to reach out to their customers, they need a lot of help and support doing that. So that's something we want to do. And for the group in the room here, I think our commitment is better tools and capabilities. I think we can do a lot more. I, I look at this business, I had a number of people tell me yesterday how much opportunity there is in this business. And I said, yes, we agree. That sounds fantastic, right? It's a matter of providing the tools. It's a matter of providing liquidity in the marketplace and raising the profile of the domain business. Right? As a company, um, and I said this to some of you yesterday, so I'm happy to share with the group. I think 
brands have responsibility at different stages of their life to do different things. There's a stage where you're advertising to, to get awareness but really take share from others. And then you get to a certain side when, where your responsibility change and what you really want to do is you want to grow the pie. What you want to do is to, to sort of advertise the industry as a whole because that brings more people into it, that creates more interest in it, and that's how you grow. And that's the stage where we're at the stage where if you look at our advertising, not too dissimilar from this presentation, it really advertises our customer. You know, there's going to be an ad one day that has one of you in it, literally, right? So it's, you know, it's really about that. It's really about growing awareness with everyone in the world about our industry, and then we can talk about our story as part of that. Wonderful. Well, we, we definitely appreciate you, I think, having a publicly traded CEO, GoDaddy, here. I think that moves the industry forward in a, a way that we just haven't been able to experience kind of before this conference. So thank you for just providing the products that we use, a lot of us in here use at VPN.com. We're very appreciative too. So yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate your thank you. Any other questions or comments from the group? This was not such a shy group yesterday. <laughs> and I actually have If I bored you to sleep, you know. Tell me. <laughs> I, I've got a uh, give us a moment. Let's go there. And we'll oh, yeah. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> so, uh, with the new branding, does this mean that we will not be seeing any more boobs? I think you're getting serious. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> we, our advertising has shifted over the years. <laughs> what may have worked years ago is not what we stand for today. I think what we want to see is a continued shift in the brand towards what we think works best for now. You got your answer. <laughs> <laughs> can, you, can you put my mic on so I can ask you? Oh, good. Okay, it's okay. So uh, it's going to sound like Paul put me up to this, but honestly, he didn't. This was not the plan. But Paul, Paul and his team are amazing. There's no question about that. Um, one of the things they're also really good at is listening to the requests and concerns of the domain investment community, so I commend them for that. One of the things I think we often hear as domain investors when we go to Paul and the team is, that sounds like a great idea. We'd like to do it. We're going to put it on the, uh, the, the sort of backlog, but the problem is we just don't have the, enough developers or development teams dedicated to our group. So I'm, I, it's although it's a very tactical question, no, it's exactly are, right. are you going to dialogue, give them some more development resources so they can get stuff that they want them done? Yeah, all of us. Actually, I'll level that one bit. Uh, it's absolutely true. That's why I mentioned that uh, you know definitely Paul and Bob and the team have been listening to you guys, but they weren't always able to get the support within GoDaddy because GoDaddy is a big company and there's lots of priorities competing for things. But one of the changes we have made actually allows leaders like Paul to make the right trade-offs for that entire business. And there's engineering capability, part capability within the pillar. Fantastic. So it's not somewhere else that you have to go. And you know, I don't know, Paul, if you want to talk about it a little bit, or I'm happy to keep <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I'd be happy to. Um, you know, one of the things is certainly, as we're moving GoDaddy to be you know, more customer-led divisions, we think within GoDaddy, you know, typically, Prior to Amon showing up, I was on the domains team. Domains a very large part of it, aftermarket and a part of domains. Now it's the domain investors team. We're, we're aligning ourselves to the customer with a full stack capability to go after the things that you guys are bringing to us to actually be able to develop. Uh, so I, I think the reorg and the restructuring of who we're going against and, and why is absolutely going to free up the things that we want to do for a while. I think if, if you had gone to, uh, you know, GoDaddy has about 9,000 employees in the world, right? If you had gone to a certain group of employees at GoDaddy, they would know exactly what a domain investor is. If you went to a very large percentage of the population, they had no idea, right? But if you look at our presentations now in the company, you're going to see domain investor as a customer on top in every slide. Any slide that talks about us as a company has a domain investor right on top. That's what Paul is talking about. It is not about, this is a domain's product, and as part of that product, we have, are serving domain investors. That entire business is now about serving domain investors and registrar actually. And then everything is lined up against that customer base. That is a significant change that we have made in the company, and we hope to, you know, work to deliver results to this group. Fantastic. So 
we are very honored for, I think, oh, if, correct me if I'm wrong, it's been over 10 years at least since the, the CEO of the <coughs> CEO of GoDaddy has you know, been here at a conference and spoken with us. So uh, I'm hoping we're gonna get some more questions.